Hello and welcome to this episode. Within this episode, I'm going to talk about the archetype of the cave. One big reason why I want to bring this up and talk about this is very much the you know connection between the symbolism of the cave the great mother but also death and rebirth and i want to uh, within this video go deeper into the symbolism connected to the archetype of the cave now when it comes to jungian psychology the great mother archetype symbolizes the feminine principle of nurturing creativity and transformation and the cave with its dark womb-like interior serves as a powerful metaphor for the great mother's generative and regenerative qualities just as the womb is the source of new life and the physical realm the cave represents the primordial source of psychic energy and potential within the unconscious caves are often shrouded in darkness symbolizing the mysteries and depths of the unconscious mind and from a jungian perspective darkness is not merely the absence of light but a fertile ground for psychological growth and transformation the descent into the darkness of the cave mirrors the journey into the depths of the unconscious where one confronts the shadow aspects of the self and undergoes a process of rebirth and renewal and emerging from the depths of the cave into the light represents the individuation process where wherein one integrates unconscious material into conscious awareness leading to greater wholeness and self-realization Caves have long been associated with rites of passage and initiatory rituals in various cultures and mythologies. Such symbolism can be, for instance, found within prehistoric cave rituals. The initiate would venture through a narrow passage into the deeper cavern, which would contain artwork that often portrays local wildlife confronting the local hunters, which has been interpreted as a type of hunting magic. Some cave paintings also seem to depict adolescent initiation rites and dance rituals, early shamanism and flute playing. Hunter-gatherer cave ritual dances were also an important aspect of shamanic practices in many cultures. These dances were often performed in sacred caves or other natural settings and were used to connect with the spirits and energies of the natural world. And these paintings are just not mere depictions but represent the archetypal experiences and symbols related to hunting, survival and initiation into adulthood. As such, the dances and the rituals performed in sacred caves accompanied by rhythmic music serve as a means to connect with the deeper energies of the natural world. From a Jungian lens, this represents the individuation process or the journey towards self-realization. Caves themselves were also seen as passages into the underworld by Indo-European cultures, such as the Romans, for instance. And within these caves, then also death and rebirth type rituals would take place. Which, as I said, is also the case within the more Neolithic context as well. Where going through the narrow cave passage into the bigger inner cave symbolizes such a death and rebirth of the psyche and a reconnection with the inner world and the deeper aspects of the psyche. So really a symbolic second birth. Especially linked to instinct and the more fertile aspects. So the inner vitality of the self. And dances were also often an important part of this. These 
dances were often accompanied by rhythmic drumming or other forms of music and were performed in a group setting. With drums made from materials such as animal skins, wood or gourds. And also other percussion instruments such as rattles or clapping sticks may also have been used. where in some cultures wind instruments such as flutes or horns were also used along with stringed instruments like the lute or harp. And these instruments were often made from natural materials such as wood or animal bones. And the uh, shaman would often lead the dance and the dancers would follow in a trance-like state, moving their bodies in a ritualized manner. Later warrior traditions such as the Coribantes also did such ecstatic practices. In such practices, Individuals often enter altered states of consciousness or trance states, and these states can be induced through various methods including rhythmic drumming, chanting, dancing, or the use of psychoactive substances, which were frequently used in such death and rebirth rituals. This death and rebirth is also symbolized by the cult of Hecate as well, where both the sun and cave play an important factor. These cave mysteries in Hecate's honor had for the entrance into the cavern 365 steps leading into the cave, which refers to the course of the sun and hence to the cavern of death and rebirth. As such, it was the cavern into which the sun would disappear at night and from which it would hence again return. This going into the cavern and returning and also the symbolism of vitality, regeneration and purification can be found within Lupercalia as well. Which I talked about more in depth in another episode that came out earlier. The aspect regarding the Lupercalia which is relevant for this particular episode concerns the Luperci. Within the Lupercalia they symbolically arrived from the underworld which they saw as connected to the ancestors where the purification ritual took place. The Lupercal cave served as a passage to the underworld and the Luperci emerged from and returned to it during the ritual. And at the Lupercal altar, a male goat and a dog were sacrificed by one of the Luperci, supervised by the Flamen Dialis, Jupiter's chief priest. On a side note, dog sacrifice was also very common with regards to Hecate as well. Where next, regarding the Lupercalia, salted meal cakes prepared by the Vestal Virgins were also offered. Following the blood sacrifice, two Luperci approached the altar, their foreheads anointed with blood and then cleansed with wool soaked in milk. Carl Jung in Symbols of Transformation called such offerings within the cave a way to appease the terrifying sight of the Great Mother. This we can also see with Juno. Her cult included the annual feeding of a sacred snake with barley cakes by the Vestal Virgins. The snake dwelt in a deep cave within the precinct of the temple. And this was a ritual act to invoke Juno's blessings and protection upon the community, ensuring their well-being and fertility. But as much as the cave is associated with the generative and regenerative qualities, 
These are also guarded by the serpent or dragon. The cave is not also the place where the hero slays this serpent. We can see this for instance with the proto-Indo-European myth of Trito, who after gaining strength from an intoxicating drink and receiving assistance from the storm god, ventures into a cave where he triumphs over the monstrous serpent and returns the recovered cattle to a priest for proper sacrifice. Where in the Mithraic mysteries the cult hero has to fight the bull, which he carries into the cave where he kills it. It is said that from its death comes all fruitfulness, especially things to eat, the cave being the equivalent of the womb, where the death and rebirth occurs. We can see the same symbolism regarding the bull and the cavern of rebirth in the Dionysian mysteries as well. Within the Dionysian rites, Dionysus' rituals connected to the sacred bull reenacted the creation of the cosmos and humanity by offering a bull as a sacrificial symbol. And this act was in his mystery seen as a divine dismemberment of the god himself. Dionysus' flesh and blood, consumed by his worshippers, symbolized the god infusing his very presence into his followers' bodies, imparting a portion of his divinity. Where in the realm of Orphic myth, seven titans attempted to dismember the infant god. And to evade them, in some versions of the myths, Dionysus underwent a series of shape-shifting transformations with the final form of a young bull. In the end, they caught him when he had taken on the form of a bull. The titans then killed him, cut him in pieces and threw the pieces into a cauldron. But Zeus slew the titans with a thunderbolt and swallowed the still throbbing heart of Zagreus, which is the earlier manifestation of Dionysus. And in this manner he was born as Dionysus before venturing into the underworld to reunite with Zagreus and thus emerge as Yahus. Carl Jung in Symbols of Transformation wrote that the parallel to the motive of dying and rising again is that of being lost and found again. And further he said it appears virtually at exactly the same place in connection with the Heroes Gamos like spring festivities, where the image of the god was hidden and then found again. And in psychological terms, this means that the treasure hard to attain lies hidden in the mother imago, so the unconscious. And this symbol points to one of life's secrets which is expressed in countless symbolical ways in mythology. When such symbols occur in individual dreams, they will be found on examination to be pointing to something like a center of the total personality of the psychic totality which consists of both conscious and unconscious. Carl Jung further states that the treasure which the hero fetches from the dark cavern is life. It is himself, newborn from the dark maternal cave of the unconscious. Carl Jung further states that as long as the child is in a state of unconscious identity with the parents, they are still one with the animal psyche and is just as unconscious as it, which implies a lack of differentiation and autonomy with the individual psyche being intertwined with that of the family. And the development of consciousness inevitably leads not only to the separation from the mother, but to the separation from the parents and the whole family circle. The separation is not only physical, but also psychological, marking the beginning of individuation. However, a new adaptation or orientation of vital importance can only be achieved in accordance with the instincts. And without this, Nothing durable results, only an artificial product which proves in the long run not to be capable of life. Hence, the heroic descent into the cavern is necessary. As such, this is why ancient initiation rites like the Koryos and Octaya or regarding the cave initiation rites for the youth were a necessity. 
and it is through such rights that the individual moves away from their identification with the family system and can become their own individual, connected to a larger whole, whilst reconnecting to instinct in a new integrated and conscious manner. Something we can also see very well in modern examples from popular culture as well. In modern storytelling, the archetype of the cave continues to be a potent symbol, often manifesting in unexpected yet profound ways. A notable example can be found in the Star Wars saga, where the cave serves as a pivotal setting for moments of psychological reckoning and transformation. One such instance occurs when Luke Skywalker journeys to Dagobah to undergo training with Jedi Master Yoda. And during his time on the swampy planet, Luke encounters a dark, foreboding cave. Upon entering, he confronts a haunting vision of Darth Vader, the embodiment of his deepest fears and the shadow aspect of himself. He then continues to strike down Darth Vader, however, when the mask opens through a crack, he finds his own face in the helmet instead. Another notable depiction of the cave archetype occurs in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Within this episode, Yoda discovers a planet in the middle of a small glowing golden nebula. When he and R2-D2 enter, the instruments and R2 malfunction, but Yoda, remembering Kaigon's advice, allows the Force to steer his starfighter. When Yoda reaches the other side of the geyser, later in the episode he is greeted by a world which is flourishing with life, and there he hears the voice of Serenity, which is one of the five priestesses who welcomes him. Later, Yoda meets the other priestesses, who each symbolize an emotion. Where later, Yoda says that he's not afraid, but that is doubted by the priestesses. And when he enters the cave in the episode, Yoda is confronted with a dark side shadow of himself. Ugh. 
Yoda thinks me not worthy. <laughs> Recognize you, I do. <laughs> Part of me you are. Yes. The power over me you have not. Through patience and training, it is I who control you. Control over me you have not. My dark side you are. Reject you I do. As such, both Luke and Yoda entering their specific caverns within this womb of the Great Mother come face to face with the contents of the shadow. And the cave here as well serves as the symbolic entrance into the depths of the unconscious, representing the womb of the Great Mother from which all life and psychological transformation emerges. And this is evident in both Luke and Yoda's encounters within the cave, where they are forced to confront their innermost fears and shadow aspects of themselves. Just as the cave symbolizes the primordial source of psychic energy and potential, it also embodies the darkness and mystery of the unconscious mind. Next to this, the serpent symbolism is present in the form of Darth Vader and the dark side shadow encountered by Yoda. The serpent, often associated with wisdom, temptation and transformation, within these encounters represents the darker aspects of the psyche that must be confronted and integrated for personal growth and enlightenment. In facing Darth Vader, Luke confronts the embodiment of his deepest fears and struggles with the temptation to succumb to the dark side of the Force, which is a first step he takes in his training as a Jedi Knight. Where similarly Yoda's battle with his dark side shadow reflects his inner conflict and the need to acknowledge and embrace all aspects of himself, including the darker impulses and emotions represented by his shadow, without letting it control him. And finally, the treasure hard to obtain represents the psychological insights and self-awareness gained through the hero's journey within the cave. Both Luke and Yoda emerge from their encounters with a deeper understanding of themselves and their place within the universe. And by confronting and integrating their shadows, they, they gain mastery over their inner turmoil and emerge stronger and more balanced as individuals. And in this sense, the cave serves as the crucible of transformation where the hero must undergo a symbolic death and rebirth in order to achieve greater self-realization and wholeness. And in conclusion, the archetype of the cave, deeply rooted in mythology, psychology and modern storytelling, serves as a powerful symbol of psychological transformation and self-realization. And ultimately, the cave remains a potent metaphor for the transformative journey of self-discovery, reminding us that true growth often requires confronting darkness to find light.